Hi, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. This is another one of my Fountain Pen 101 videos. Today I'm covering Fountain Pen terminology. A lot of this terminology is available in the Fountain of Knowledge on GouletPens.com, but I thought it would be easier to show some of these things in a video format because sometimes it's hard to get the idea just by words of what some of these Fountain Pen terms mean. These are going to help to lay the foundation for all the future Fountain Pen 101 videos that I do because I'm going to be using a lot of these terms in my normal uh, talking. So getting an understanding of these is going to really help you in your general fountain pen usage as well as an understanding of uh, some of the more advanced fountain penning techniques. So here we go with my fountain pen 101 basic terminology. What you're seeing here is an example of feathering. These are pretty extreme examples but it's when you have small offshoots that come out of your ink line while you're writing. Generally it's because you have inexpensive paper or absorbent paper that's not really intended for a liquid fountain pen ink. Pencils and gel inks will usually perform on these pretty well, but when you have a liquid ink it needs a less absorbent paper, otherwise you notice things like feathering. With papers that are more absorbent as well, you may notice something called bleed through. Bleed through is when the ink soaks into the paper so much it actually shows up on the other side like you can see with the orange and the purple inks that I just used in the feathering example. Show through or ghosting, also maybe known as echoing, is what you see with the blue ink that I used. You can still see it on the back of the page, but it's not coming all the way through. Spread is a symptom of absorbent paper, and it can mean even with the same pen and same ink, your line can appear wider than it actually should. I'll use an example here. I have two different types of paper and I'll just go straight across them both. And you can see that on this paper the line looks a lot wider. On this one it looks narrower. That's because there's more spread happening on this paper. It's a little different than feathering. It's not quite as extreme where it has actual offshoots of ink coming out, but it does mean that the liquid ink is absorbing more into the paper and will give you a wider line so this is a key example of how paper can make a very significant difference in terms of how your pen writes. Dry time refers to how quickly ink will dry on a page. This is something you don't really think about with ballpoint and rollerball pens, but it is a factor with fountain pens. Paper will be a huge factor. The more absorbent papers will usually dry faster. The more ink resistant papers will dry slower. So it's just something you need to be aware of. Here are some examples of some times doing some smearing with my finger of how quickly these inks will dry. And you can see that these are all the same brand of ink, but even on a per ink basis, a per color basis I should say, the dry time can vary quite significantly. So it's just something that you need to be aware of. Feedback, or tooth as some people call it, is a term that can be used for either the paper or for a fountain pen nib. But generally what it means is how much resistance you're getting while you're writing. Smoother papers like Rhodia, Clairefontaine, lots of others uh, have a very smooth surface and will give you very little feedback. So you'll be able to write and it feels very slick. Whereas other papers such as you know Crown Mill Pure Cotton or if you have any laid papers uh, can be a lot more textured and have a lot more resistance while they write. Gives you a greater sense of control. But it's really a matter of personal preference as to which is best. The same term can also be used for a pen. Depending on how smooth the tip of the nib is ground, that can make a difference for how the pen feels as well. So this is one of those terms where it can t refer to either paper or a pen, but the interaction with both of them gives you that ultimate feel that you have when you write. Now there's this rating that says G, or sometimes it says GSM, and that refers to the weight of a paper. It's not necessarily an indication of the thickness, but it is a loose guideline for the thickness of the paper. It's kind of the best thing that's generally advertised in terms of its thickness. But that weight, it stands for grams per square meter, and that means if you took one sheet of this paper in one square meter, how much would that weigh? Generally when you're using fountain pens you want to stick to 80 gram or higher. The higher the number you go, 100, 150, 270, even higher, that's that paper gets thicker and thicker and is able to withstand a liquid fountain pen ink better. It's not necessarily a hard fast rule that the thicker you go the better it'll handle it, but it's kind of a starting point. 
So sticking with something 80 gram or higher is usually going to get you in the right direction at least. Sizing refers to the finish that's on a piece of paper or a coating if you will. I wrote all of these with the same ink and same pen but the coating, as you can see by how shiny it is, can make a difference in terms of its water resistance, how much it shows through to the other side, the dry time, how much shading or color variation that you get on the page, how absorbent it is. Sizing can really make a huge difference. And it, there's sometimes there's this very loose advertising as to what kind of finish is on a paper. So experimentation is really gonna be key when it comes to using fountain pen ends because the liquid ink is more susceptible to the sizing than it is with a ballpoint or a rollerball. Absorbency probably a term you're familiar with, but it refers to how much the ink soaks into the page. Absorbency can be a big factor when determining how quickly the ink is going to dry on the page, as well as how it's going to appear. This is the same ink with the same pen, but on two different types of paper that have different degrees of absorbency, you can see the color looks a little different, even the size of the line looks a little bit different. And I can almost guarantee you it's going to be different in terms of how much it shows through to the back and stuff like that. So the absorbency does make a huge difference when you're talking about paper. This is an example of nib creep. Nib creep is really nothing more than when a fountain pen ink comes up through the slit that's cut into a nib and the ink comes onto the surface, the top surface of the nib. It's really just aesthetic. It doesn't change anything about the functionality of the pen. But it's something that a lot of people talk about, so it's a term I want you to be familiar with. Saturation is a term used to describe the amount of dye that is used in a fountain pen ink. In a practical sense, really what it means is that the more heavily saturated an ink color is, the bolder the color will be and the more flat the color will appear, such as this black ink here. You can see it looks almost as if it was written with a rollerball just because it's one continuous looking color. On the other hand, this uh, orange ink is not as heavily saturated so when you're laying down more ink it'll appear darker and when you're laying down less ink it'll appear lighter so when you have an, an ink that's not as saturated you're going to get more variation in color as you write now as to which one is your personal preference that's up to you but that is what saturation refers to in a practical sense shading is the variation between light and dark color when you're writing with a liquid fountain pen ink a lot of people, when they're new to fountain pens, think that this is some kind of defect or that something is wrong. It's actually quite the opposite. This is actually one of the most appealing things about fountain pens, is that they have ability to do this. Uh, you can see here, like uh, on the orange ink, it's really dark where the ink was put down heavy, and then when it was put down lighter, um, it's a lighter yellow color. Same thing goes with this blue and the parts of the letters where maybe more ink pooled up or I was writing harder uh, and, and putting more ink down, uh, it changes the color a little bit. That is called shading. Flow is a term that can refer to either a pen or an ink. Really all it's talking about is how the ink goes through the pen to get to the nib. Skipping is a term that's used to explain when you have writing and periodically there are parts of the letter that even though you write with them are not appearing such as right here, right here. You can see where I made an effort to make the strokes but the ink didn't quite come down. Now this could be because of the paper, it could be because of the pen, it could be because of the ink. There's a lot of things that could cause it to skip um, and it will vary for every person. Generally speaking though, this is probably more skipping than you want to see. Usually, I will say it is, a, it is an effect of the pen, but just so you can recognize it, that is skipping. Starting is not all that different from skipping, but it generally refers to when skipping happens as you're starting to write a word. You can see how I wrote the same word twice with the same pen, but on this letter, the S didn't start writing until I was ha almost halfway through the letter. That is called, uh, generally referred to as a starting problem. And it can be related to a variety of things. Usually it's a pen issue. Flex refers to the amount that a nib will bend while you're writing with it. Now some pens, uh, I've got a Lamy here, uh, their nibs are pretty stiff and they will not give you a whole lot of variation while you're writing. 
other pens, for example, this, uh, this Noodler is Conrad Flex Pen, the tines will actually bend and separate as you're writing with it to increase the amount of ink flow as it's coming out. And that gives you a line variation such as that. Other pens, um, such as one of my favorites here, I've got a Pilot Custom 74, it doesn't have what I would call flex, but it's got softness or spring to it. The nib will bend just a little bit, not enough to give you variation while you write, but enough to act as a little bit of a shock absorber while you're writing so that it kind of smooths out the bumps and just makes it a little bit more enjoyable writing experience. Different pens have different degrees of flex or softness to them, and discovering that is a major part of the enjoyment of fountain pens. The grind refers to the actual sanding or polishing of the tip of a fountain pen nib. Now there are different size designations. Uh, the sizes for fountain pen nibs are a bit like women's dress sizes. They are kind of approximate and vary from one manufacturer to another. But generally they're, they're good for loose guidelines. Um, but you, uh, you can get different, uh, because it's all metal, you can get them ground in different ways. So you can have them where it's a very fine nib where it writes really small lines. You can get them a little broader. You can even get special grinds such as an italic where you have it ground flat on the tip like this. And that gives you variation when you're doing cross strokes and down strokes to give it a little more of a calligraphy feel to it. But all of that is referred to as a grind. I hope this terminology was helpful for you. Of course, this doesn't cover everything, but this should give you a pretty good framework for moving forward with fountain pens in the future. If you have any questions, you can always email me at brianagulepens.com. Thanks for watching, and ride on.